Hi. Uh, today we're going to be talking about real versus reactive power. We're putting together two videos for you. One's kind of the level 100 version and the other video is going to be a little bit more engineering based. And so this first video is going to be um, really broad concepts, how to think about uh, real versus reactive power and kind of the importance of real and reactive power. So in energy, in power, um, in that power industry, you are going to hear often about reactive power, real power, and apparent power. These are three types of power that are prevalent in AC circuits. Um, and it actually comes down to an energy management type position in a factory or in um, anybody who's doing regulations. This is how the utility is going to bill you f as a major consumer of electricity. And so looking at this, this is a right triangle with an angle. And so reactive power, real power, and apparent power are the three legs of that triangle. Um, you can use trigonometry, the laws of trigonometry, kind of solve for one another. It's kind of a cool function of how this works. Um, but this is kind of your summation uh, vector of reactive and real power. These are the two types of power that kind of give you what the utility is going to be billing you for, which is your apparent power. So reactive power is measured in VAR, real power is measured in watts, and apparent power is measured in VA. So what this ultimately comes down to is when you're looking at when you're looking at your plant's power or when you're looking at your home's power when you're talking to people about power um, you're going to be looking at this um, power factor you're going to hear power factor used a lot and the power factor is the ratio of the real power to the apparent power what that means is that you're taking this leg of the vector and dividing it by the apparent power and you're going to get some value between zero and basically one or you know a hundred percent so if you've got a, a if you've got a real power circuit and all you have is real power it's going to be a hundred so it's going to be a hundred percent so it's going to be one if you have uh, fifty percent reactive and it looks more like a square where these two legs are the same real and uh, reactive, then this, this power factor is gonna be 50% or 0.5. So these are the concepts we're gonna be using. We're gonna look at a horse and a rail system. So the horse is pulling a cart on a rail system. Now, I'm not super familiar with horses or pulling anything on rail systems. This is just an easy example that you can find online. But what happens when, you, when a horse is pulling something on a rail system, that horse will often walk in a path like this. Okay, It's not necessarily going to walk in a straight line because that would be really efficient. And so if a horse is, running, is, is walking in a, in a zigzag, that cart is on rails. So that cart, these, this motion, what you really want to see to be the most efficient is a straight line. And so any deviation, basically left or right, that the horse takes, that, that's, wasted, that's wasted effort on the horse's part. Because realistically, all that matters is getting from point A to point B in a straight line. And walking in this sort of zigzag motion just takes away from that. And so what we're going to call the real power portion of this is that any force in that forward direction. So for those who have taken, you know, some, some math, math courses, a vector, um, you can have a line, right? And that line is made up into different uh, subparts, right? So when you add up these vectors, you're going to get a vector with a, with a uh, direction. And so that direction will change. So these, let's just think about as vectors. Position and direction are different in them slightly, but there's going to be a component here that we're going to call um, your real power because that's the direction where the working load is helpful. Um, and this is, we're going to call the reactive because no, no, 
effective work is done. So hopefully that helps kind of understand that reactive power. Reactive power is you're not getting any, you're not getting any real work done in, in the system. Whereas real power, that's how you're going to be powering your lights. That's how you're going to be producing electricity, mechanical energy. That's where all of those things come from. This is doing real productive work and reactive power goes back and forth within the circuit and doesn't get anything real or productive done. All right, so to put this all together, a um, couple big takeaways here. If you are managing the billing in like an accounting department, if you are managing um, energy monitoring, these are all concepts that you're going to need to know, understand, and probably understand at a level higher than this. If you need a better understanding, I would highly suggest looking at the next video, which is gonna go through more details of active versus reactive or real versus at reactive power. So just to summarize on this very, very basic level, power factor is how utilities bill. And so when a utility sends their billing to you, um, for example, if your power factor is not at like 0.95, if it's, if it's lower than 0.95, they're going to bill you more because you have more waste or less efficiency in your system. And so that's just one criteria that we see across the industry is that 0.95 seems to be a mile marker. But understanding your power factor, you also need to understand what real and reactive power is and where you may have that in your system. So again, utilities are billing based on your power factor. That's a big part of it is how much of, how much of the system is that reactive power piece where it's not necessarily to get the work done, um, but it's there as an ancillary kind of evil. So reactive power um, can be caused by underutilized motors, discharge lighting, transformers. These are all just good examples. So if you are managing energy at a plant or you are trying to find out ways to increase your efficiency, look at these, analyze these things if you have any of them in the system. So to combat the reactive power efficiency losses you may see, um, you can look at adding capacitors, uh, synchronous uh, motors, uh, synchronous generators, anything like that. You can look at adding to the system to try to combat that efficiency loss that you're seeing. So hopefully this was a good summary of what the problem is. Again, here at One Energy, we directly interconnect to uh, plants and facilities all across the nation. And so as we do that, we work with a lot of plant managers, energy managers, sustainability managers who need to understand these concepts and largely do. And so just as a quick entry level, hopefully this was a good video for you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it.